On today's show, we're going to get our first look at the LotMax SC10 and show you exactly what it can do. So stick around. Hey gang, welcome back to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland, and this is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. On today's show, it's no different. We've got our review of the LotMax SC10, which is this beautiful printer right here. I want to give you full disclosure that this is not a sponsored episode by LotMax. Full disclosure, they did send me the printer and asked me to play with it and have a look at it and give my honest review. So they are not paying for my words. And my words and opinions are all my own. Now, this show is not also for children. Uh, we want to make that perfectly clear as per the new COPPA rules. So, let's talk about the SC10 from LotMax. It has a 250 by 250 by 270 build volume. Uh, so, it can do kind of that right in between of your Ender 3 and your CR10. Is it worth the money? Absolutely it is. It's a very well-built machine. It has a touch screen on the front. It has a very similar, love that sound, has a very similar head to the CR10. This is kind of their um, look at competition of the CR20, which if you've never seen a CR20, it looks almost identical to this machine with the uh, difference that it has a dial instead of a touchscreen. This one has a wonderful touchscreen. We'll get a nice close-up of it for you a little bit later. It is fully enclosed. This machine has a 350 watt, 24 volt power supply, which is by our good friends at Meanwell. It has a custom built board, but the board is very similar to an MKS Gen L board. So if you wanted to swap it out, this also came with silent steppers, both on the X and the Y. It has 4988s on the Z and the extruder, which I think at some point in time I'm going to change because they did make this available so that you can change it, um, which is kind of a nice thing. Now, it ships with its own version of Cura 4.2, um, which has all the Lot Max features in it. Now, I've spoken to Lot Max, and they are going to make some changes as per my request. Um, the way that this prints right out of the box, if you're using the Lot Max version of Cura, you'll notice that the layer heights are off. This has an eight millimeter lead lead screw on it, um, so it really needs to go by that uh, zero or point zero four layer height multiplier. So in this case, it'd be point zero four, point zero eight, point one two, and so on. Um, always adding 0 0.04 to your next layer height for whatever resolution that you want. Uh, 0.2 being even. Now, uh, that being said, it also has a fuse on the side, so uh, above the uh, socket for the cord. So if you should blow the fuse, you can also pull that fuse out. Um, it's easy to get into. There, I'm going to put up some pics of how this looks inside, um, so you guys will get to see that here right away as well. So we'll go to those pictures now. And as you can see, um, it is very well laid out and clean inside this uh, particular machine. Um, there you can see the, the power supply and you can see the board there as well. Very cleanly routed wiring, very easy to get at everything and make changes to the stepper drivers if you so choose. Again, you can change those last two stepper drivers, which are green in this case. Uh, they're 4988 uh, 2 amp. Um, Stepper drivers, you can change those out for 20 or 2208s, which is what these the first two are on the X and the Y, as you can see here. Okay, so how does it print? Well, I went to Make, and I downloaded Make's uh, accoutrements of different tests that they do. Um, I want to start out with this one right here. This is our tower test. We'll get a close-up of that if we can. I believe Angus from uh, Maker's Muse also used these tests recently. And I, I find them to be a really good measure of how does this print out of the box. So without any real tuning. 
So this was done at a 0.2 layer height. You can see that there are some aberrations going up. So out of a, a score of five, and that's what we're going to score all these off of, a score of five, I would say that this is not horrible, but I certainly wouldn't give it a five. This is a three, in my opinion, maybe a 2.5. Uh, try and get the light to catch that just right without getting too much more. Hey, there you go. So you can see that um, it did have some ringing uh, initially. Uh, and that was, again, using the LotMax version of Cura uh, with their standard setting. So we'll push that one off to the side. The next one I want to show you is this. This is the mushroom test. And what it does is it builds support uh, material all the way around and underneath the cap of this mushroom. Now you can see on the inside, if I stop, there we go. You can see on the underside that there's still a little bit of uh, support material there. But other than that, it came out pretty clean. Um, I would be real happy with this print at a 0.2. Again, this was done at 0.2 millimeters uh, with dark gray filament. Let's take a look at these two. Now this is an XY test. And this is the first one that I did. Do, using the um, settings again in the lot max version of Cura. And you can see that this one failed miserably. There's a lot of salmon skinning, a lot of ringing. Uh, as we come around the sides, you can see it as well. You can see it in the two open circles on the back and all the way around. Now, when I redid the settings using um, straight Cura 4.4 uh, with the Creality CR20 um, base as my as my uh, slicer. This is how it came out. Much nicer, a lot less ringing. Um, turn you know, bringing down that uh, the jerk value. The jerk value on this is set to, to 20 out of the box. Uh, so you you really want to bring that down to between five and eight by doing the jerk settings and dropping down uh, the speed, I was able to get a much nicer print. Side by side, you can see that there is quite a difference between the two. So what would I score the first one? Well, I would score the first one probably a one, uh, maybe a 1.5. Uh, definitely moving up to this one, I would score it a three out of five. So there's a little bit more tuning to do out of the box. Now, this test, I cannot remember the name of this test, but I think this has something to do with um, stringing. It has a lot to do with stringing. You can see we've got some there. Uh, the points came out pretty good. I did break a couple, um, so I apologize for that. But the stringing is not horrible. There is a little bit, so there's some retraction issues. That's what this is, a retraction test. Uh, so there are some retraction issues there that I'm gonna, going to have to fix. But again, using that lot max, uh, version of Cura, um, not horrible at all. This is a surface test. Now we can see that uh, it didn't do too bad. I would score this probably a four, um, other than the the couple of little drag lines that we see there. Um, this came out pretty decent. Even the dome came out pretty decent. There's not a lot of aberrations in there. There's no ghosting, no stringing. Um, you can see the uh, inner walls or the inner infill because the walls on this are only um, there's only two perimeters on this so it's not very very big now this is an overhang test and if we look at this overhang test starts with the first one which is great second which is good third which is good we start to lose it in number four there you can see we have a little bit of a bow in number four and on the fifth level we have a little bit more of a bow this, I, again, I would score this at about a three out of five for a printer right out of the box. Um, and second to last, we have our overhang test. And this, you can see, will go up to 70 degrees. So it prints flat like that. I printed it actually in this orientation so that it was going back and forth across the X this way as opposed to going back and forth across the X this way. And I did find that on the backside where it starts to get a little bit dicey um, and you can see there there's a definite difference as we get the light i should have probably used a lighter color but um, as you see the light you can see it right in there where it starts to change and that's right about that 50 degree mark 
So that's telling me that's where I'm going to start to need support um, with this printer in particular. But the, the uh, text on the bottom came out really, really nice. I'm pretty happy about that. And then finally, this test. What is this test? This is a zero clearance test. And I was very impressed by this. I did this on an Ender 3 as well. And the Ender 3 did not perform nearly as well as this one. And this actually goes in different degrees. And I'm just going to show you that now. You can see that it starts at 0.2, then goes to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6 um, are the uh, spacings. At 0.2, I could not get this peg to release. But all the other ones just basically fell out. So... At 0.3, clearance is great. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6 clearances are great. And now this is also using a 0.4 nozzle. So I would score this definitely a 4 out of 5. And uh, so just based on the, the different tests that we did, I think it went really, really well. So overall, what would I say about this printer? It was easy to put together. Four screws, you're done. Um, it's well built. It is a, I'm going to say it is sort of a clone or a competition to the CR20 from Creality. Uh, but Lotmax has done a really good job with that touchscreen. Uh, the way that they put this together, I think that uh, they've got a definite winner on their hands. And I will put pricing below because as of recording this, I still don't know exactly what the pricing is on it. Um, on my desk here, I've got a real world print. So we're going to go to that now. And you can see here I've done a dome. Now this is a dome from uh, Mr. Baddeley's Printed Droids. Uh, this is actually uh, one of several parts. And this is just a little container that you can put stuff in. And then of course the top of the lid. Now the reason I chose this was because it was a big print and it really kind of covers everything. There was no support needed on this whatsoever. So this printer, this uh, SC10 really printed this beautifully It's got very little layer lines. Yes, you can see the seam line. It's all in one spot So you can go ahead and clean that off and go ahead and just do a quick little sanding the detail on this There's a little salmon skinning. I think that's more more from the camera than anything else, but um, You can see that Overall it printed this beautifully the lines are nice and crisp all of the details are nice and crisp it's definitely a printer I am going to use more and more. So what are the pros and what are the cons? You're going to definitely ask me that. Um, I would say that, let's start with the cons. The bed mat, I'm not a big fan of. These bed mats were the same ones that they used on the early Enders, which is like a polypropylene substrate on the bottom. And then on the top, they've just got uh, a, what feels like uh, and, and basically operates like a piece of build tack, um, their own brand, of course, branded their own way. These I'm not a big fan of because the polypropylene is so thin. This is like circuit board material. It's easy. You could crack this pretty easy if you bent it too far. Um, I prefer this more solid polypropylene or glass. Um, the bed is very easy to level uh, on the pro side. Uh, one more con that I would say to this is that when you're lining this up to get the, the wheels um, exactly right, you really should use uh, two items on either side, one on either side that are exact same height. Line this up before you put the lead screw in. You guys know that I say that all the time when it comes to uh, building 3D printers. The lead screw should be the last thing that you put in so that you know everything's aligned to the frame and everything is square. Now, we're not going to call this uh, level because leveling is a whole different issue. What you want to make sure is that this upper set is square to the rest of the frame. And you want to make sure that this x-axis is square to the frame. So you're going to take two items, one on this side, one on the other side that are of equal height. You're just going to bring this rested down. Adjust your eccentric spacer so none of your um, wheels move and uh, you should be in good shape. Now, 
The other con to this is that it does utilize that Creality like hot end. Um, it is almost identical to the Creality hot end. Would I change the hot end? Absolutely. I would put in uh, probably a Micro Swiss uh, hot end, which, as you guys know, is probably one of my favorites for the Creality products. Um, or just do some uh, rebuilding of your own with a titanium heat break and uh, all metal block and titanium nozzle. Uh, the pros really good interface on the front, uh, touchscreen interface. Nice and solid, easy. It doesn't have any racking. There's no racking to it because of the solid bottom frame. You don't have to worry about that. It'll always sit flat on your table. 24 volt power supply, so the bed heats up fairly quickly. Um, it is 350 watts, so that is more than enough power to handle everything. All of the um, cabling is already done for you. All you gotta do is just plug in a couple of things. It does come with a filament out detection. It also comes with uh, the power outage um, engaged in the firmware. So if you power should go out, you can restart your print. Is it easy to slice with? Yes. Is Slicing, if you utilize the uh, CR20's um, profile in Cura 4.4 or 4.3, whichever one you're using currently, um, you should be fine. All you're going to have to do is just change the build volume because this is a little bit bigger than the build volume on a CR20. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So would I recommend you buy one of these? Absolutely. Would I recommend it to a beginner? Absolutely. Um, it's very easy to put together. You can be up and running in just a few minutes. Uh, like I said, four bolts and you're all done. So, Lot Max SC10. Gets a thumbs up from me and probably from the rest of the staff in the studio today. There we go. Here they come. Dun, dun, dun. Both Brian and Jess are here today. We're going to thank them for coming in and helping out. I want to thank my lovely wife who, without her, I wouldn't have come in today. I would have stayed at home and watched The Mandalorian. Get caught up. Binge watch it, I guess. I want to thank Spool 3D because without them, we wouldn't have this wonderful studio to bring you guys all of the reviews and how-tos that we do. And uh, you can get anything that you need from them. Uh, just check out their website at spool3d.ca. They've got everything you need from printers. They don't have this one, but they do have uh, the Creality products. So you can check out their printers, their parts, their accessories, and of course, filament. Check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool 3D. Well, that's my time. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to call it a day and uh, just go home and relax. Maybe mix myself a drink and watch The Mandalorian. Catch up. All right, until next time, my friends, please remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.